Hey everybody, you're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and I have not been this excited about a new toy drone in a while. Uh, the brand new Tello from Rise is here. We're gonna check it out today and see how it does, so stay tuned. So if you haven't heard of the Tello, it is a, a brand new toy drone under $100, and what makes it special is this company, Rise, has partnered with DJI and Intel to put some really cool uh, features and electronics in this thing, give you the most bang for your buck for 99 bucks. So first of all, I'm gonna tell you, it's pretty small. If you've ever flown a DJI Spark, it is significantly smaller than the Spark. It's got uh, a 720p camera on the front, and it does shoot with image stabilization, but it's digital stabilization, not, op uh, not mechanical so that means it's probably not going to be as good as having a gimbal but better than having nothing it has brushed motors so that's part of how they keep the cost down and it weighs 80 grams with the battery and the prop guards so that's pretty light and that actually is under the requirement for registration in the u.s by the faa so you don't have to register this drone if you want to fly it now by default it flies over wi-fi using your telephone and you can use your phone as a remote control and also as a live view, but by flying over Wi-Fi, you're gonna have a limited range, but this isn't designed to be flown very far away. It does have optical sensors on the bottom for positioning, so if you're flying it indoors or if you're flying it outdoors, uh, not very high, it's gonna be able to do a little bit better at holding itself in position using these optical sensors, but it does not have GPS. So GPS is something that uh, would hold it really steady in wind and stuff like that. I don't think this is going to do very well in wind, so it's designed for flying outdoors when there's no wind or flying indoors. It does come with four spare propellers, and you use this little propeller tool here to hold the propellers in order to uh, take them off and replace them if you need to for any reason. If you keep the prop guards on, you really shouldn't need to. And I will say with this quad, especially if you're a new flyer and you're just learning, it's probably a good idea just to leave the prop guards on it so that you don't damage anything. The battery is a little 1S battery that uh, pops into the back. Now, it does have an optional charging station that you can buy. I don't have that charging station. So what I had to do was just pop the battery in the back like this and then actually plug the um, USB cable into the side. There's a micro USB slot right over here in this side. And if you put the USB cable in there and plug it into your computer or into a USB power char charger, it will actually charge this thing for you. There's a little blue light on the front that blinks when it's charging, and then it turns solid blue when it's uh, done charging. In order to actually fly it, if you don't have the remote control, you need to connect to it via Wi-Fi. And the way you do that is you, first of all, turn it on, uh, look for Tello on Wi-Fi, and when you see it, connect to it with your phone. And then once you're connected to it, open the Tello app. Now the Tello app is available for both uh, the App Store for iOS and also Google Play for Android devices. So I've downloaded the Tello app. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it and try flying it. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead and start up the Tello and there is a little power button right here on the side and you just hold that power button down and you should see a light blink on the front and then it comes on. And then uh, you go to your um, Wi-Fi settings, find the Tello in the Wi-Fi settings. There it is. Connect to it. Now there's no password or anything like that required. And once you're connected to it, you open up the Tello app, which I've downloaded from the App Store. And there you can see our live view of the Tello. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit record in the app, and I'm going to hit the auto takeoff button. Slide to take off, yes. And up it goes. And let me get it away a little bit so that it's not blowing all my papers and everything everywhere. And yeah, check it out. It's uh, pretty stable. There's a slight breeze, not much, but just a little bit of one. Very stable for no GPS. Yes, agreed. So, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's just try let's just try spinning it with the yaw. Oh, let's go a little higher so the dog doesn't get it. There it is spinning. 
I've got a very clear picture on my uh, uh, screen here. Now I'm going to guess it's going to be more stable at low altitudes because of the fact that the, the um, sensors will be able to pick up on the ground a little better. But now I'm just going to zoom it around the yard a little bit and see how that does. So. And as I said, the, the uh, image is pretty solid. Let's see if I can bring it in here. Whoop. Down a little bit. There it goes. Yeah. So I will say I had pretty low expectations about flying it with the um, phone, but this one's not bad to fly with the phone. Kind of excited to try it with the remote control, but so far with the phone, it's doing okay. All right, I'm just going to hit land. Oh, hand landing. Okay, here it goes. Hand landing. And hit yes, and it should come down to your palm. Hey! Nice. And go forward out from under the porch. And now we're going to try some of these flight modes. So we're going to try a flip. So slide on screen to flip in eight directions. Available flight, tap X to exit. So I'll hit start. And now up and right, up and left, backwards. Wow, it does some nice flips. Right. All right. Bring it down a little bit lower. And let's try back, then forward. <laughs> it's a pretty fun way to do the flips just by swiping. I guess you have to give it uh, half a second right after you've um, done one flip before you do the next one, which makes sense. Just let it recover a little bit. We're going to X out of that. We're going to try the, uh, let's try the 360. Record a short video while spinning in 360. Tap X. Okay, so now it's recording this automatically. I'm not doing any sort of controls. It's just doing a quick 360 and recording that automatically. And again, I'm not controlling it at all. This is uh, one of the intelligent flight modes. I wonder if it just keeps going until I stop it. Okay, so it did 360 and then it stopped. All right, now we're going to try the uh, circle. All right, we're going to see if we, we can circle around, um, around Tate. All right, Tate, right there. You ready? Yeah. Here we go for the circle one more time. Circle and start. And again, I'm not giving it any controls. It's doing this on its own. Pretty amazing without GPS that it can do this. I'm getting a little bit of hesitation here and there on the Wi-Fi, but not anything bad. Like it's half a second and then it pops back into place. All right, that was cool. So now let's try uh, let's try another flight mode. Gonna bring it back over here a little bit. Okay, we'll do the hand landing. So it senses his hands, it's going up on its own. So now I'm gonna hit it, uh, I'm gonna tell it to land and do hand landing and say yes. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna try the throw and go. So, uh, yeah, let's see what it says. It says, throw and go. Throw the aircraft, and it will take off and hover in place. All right, so it says, click the icon button, then throw the aircraft upward after the five-second countdown. The aircraft will automatically hover in place. Only use this feature in an open area and make sure your flight path is clear of people, animals, and, and obstacles. Okay. No, no, like just... No, don't 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 throw it like a frisbee. No, no, no don't do that. <laughs> All right, so just just uh, put it flat in your hand, and when I say go, toss it. Okay. 
five, four, three, two, one, throw and go. Nice. It just it just stops there once it's uh once it's in the air. Like I said, there's a little breeze. It's pretty calm today. I wouldn't do this in a strong wind, but um, Tate's blowing on it. <laughs> All right. Ah, hello. <laughs> All right. Hello, Tello. I'm pretty impressed so far with these uh, intelligent flight modes, with the flight characteristics using the, the phone. Um, can't wait to get a remote control on it. And the way it stays in place using the downward sensors, uh, no GPS, is pretty darn cool. Now, I'm getting another error code. Oh, that might have just been because I was holding it up. In, yeah, when you pick it up and hold it at an angle, you get this error code 21, which probably means that it's not level. Let's see. Keep area... A, Keep aircraft stationary and level. Check motor and propeller. If this air persists, contact rise tech support. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna try the bounce uh, feature. I'm gonna take it back out, out there a little bit. And let's see what this is all about. So, bounce, well it shouldn't hit the ground. It should just bounce up and down. There it goes. So again, I'm not doing that, it's just doing that on its own. The wind's getting it just a little bit, but it's still staying pretty uh, pretty much in place. What's the point of that one? Uh, I don't know that there's a point other than it's just, you know, fun. Sure. What's, what's the point of flips, right? And we're gonna try this, uh, this app, this, this intelligent flight mode, up and away. So let's take it right there. It's raining just a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and hit the intelligent flight mode and hit up and out, start, and there it goes. Now you wouldn't want to do that indoors because you'd probably hit a wall or the ceiling. And it doesn't go too far, which is nice. So there you go. That was, that was the up and out uh, flight. Let's see what Jenga thinks of it. Oh, the girl. She says, want to play? Want to play? <laughs> there are no sensors on this guy, so you can hit things. So be careful. All right, I'm going to try something here. You ready? <laughs> oh! Now, the question is versatility or durability. I just crashed it. Uh, I don't see anything damaged. Seems okay. There's a little bit of a scratch on that propeller, you can see, but I don't think it's damaged. Yeah, four extra. I don't think it's damaged to fly. So one important feature that uh, I need to mention is that when you turn it on, you need to make sure it's sitting on a level surface because the IMUs need to calibrate. So I was holding it just now and I turned it on and it wouldn't calibrate because I was moving it. You really need it on a level surface. Now that it's calibrated, I should be able to do the throw and go mode. So I'm gonna pick it up, hit the throw and go button. It's gonna count down five, four, three, Pretty cool. Nice job. All right, now we're gonna try some fancy flying. We're gonna try this one more time. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> Jenga, no ma'am. Circle, go. Go. Talking scared. 
No sensors. No fear sensors. One thing that just happened, Tate put his hand or put the camera under it and the bottom sensors actually went up because it sensed something beneath it. I'm gonna see if I can go under this table. And then back under the table. And once again, the rise rises from the ashes. Big finish with the hand landing. And quite the finish. Boom. <laughs> rise. Okay, so one other thing, it does not have a micro SD card slot. So in order to save the photos, they actually write to your mobile device. And so what you do is you hit the play button on your mobile device. You've got photos and video. So I selected video and I'm gonna hit select and then you pick all the ones that you wanna save and then you basically just hit the uh, save button right here, save uh, 10 videos to album and it'll save them all. So it's pretty breezy out here today. So I thought I would show you the difference between the low and high flight rates with the Tello in this uh, breeze. I'd say we probably got about 12 to 15 mile an hour gusts coming up. Maybe not quite 15, but uh, right now it's blowing a bit. Um, so let's see how it does in terms of flying in low rate and then we'll switch it over to high rate. And I just want you to see how much faster it flies in high rate. So I'm gonna go ahead and record a little bit, hit the auto takeoff. And there it is. Uh, bring it back over here a little bit. And again, one of the things that blows me away about this is it does not have GPS, but it still holds in one position using the, um, using the uh, vision system on the bottom of it. Let me bring it back over here. The wind is blowing pretty hard that direction. So I let go of the stick. Let me bring it down a little bit more. I let go of the stick and it's just holding right there in the wind with no GPS. You can see it's tilted over fighting the wind. So now I'm gonna go ahead and switch it into high or fast rate and you'll see how much uh, better it does in the wind now. This is fighting the wind. And here it comes with the wind. Look out, whoa, I almost hit the camera. So, let's see if I can uh, bring it back over here. Yeah, it goes really fast with the wind in high rate. So you can see it, it, it breaks like it has GPS. I mean, it just comes to a stop because of that vision positioning system. When you put your hand under it, it actually goes up because it's trying not to hit anything below it, which is pretty awesome and then you can hand land it. So the biggest complaint about the Tello people are making is the fact that you have to fly it with your phone. Well, the good news is there are Bluetooth controls out there that will work with your phone, connect to your Android or your iOS phone, and allow you to fly it with a normal uh, remote control, more like the experience you would have flying any other drone. Now, I'm gonna test this in the next video. I haven't tried it yet, so I don't actually know how well it works. Uh, it connects via Bluetooth to your phone, and your phone still is the thing that's talking to the Tello. So you're not gonna get any more range or anything like that with this. You're just gonna get a better, easier flying experience than you have with a touchscreen. Uh, that said, I'm excited to put this thing through its paces, try it out for the next couple of weeks, and really see how it does in terms of flight time, in terms of high and low rate, in terms of all the built-in intelligent flight modes, and of course, flying it with the remote control. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more videos about all kinds of drones, please subscribe to Ready Set Drone. We'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.